Okay, let's go. Oh, you're going to be charming, you are. Shut up. Right, what's the air look like? Right, morning everybody. Um, back to the channel. Back out again post lockdown. And um, riding a Triumph Trident. Well, good morning and welcome back to 36 Moto. Lockdown is easing. Boris's road map is allowing us to uh, travel a bit further. Um, so I'm taking the advantage, first day out on a bike, what a day, look at it, the weather is absolutely bike friendly, no question about it. So anyway, I'm off now down to uh, Lagunas, and I'm going to ride the new Triumph Trident. Now I've heard lots of things about this bike, I've seen a few reviews, people have done some reviews already, which have been really, really useful. Um, but I've got to say, I've been sort of trying to decide whether it's for me, whether it's my sort of thing, whether I like that type of bike. I don't know. I'm going to go and give it a really good workout. Motorways, country lanes, through town. And I'm going to see. The people are banging on about this value for money. £7,000 or just over, which is absolutely outstanding value in today's motorcycle world. And, from what I can gather, people are you're getting a really good bit of kit with it. So let's see how we get on. Is it going to be exactly what it says on the tin? So the Triumph Trident, £7,100 on the road as it sits here at the moment. Um, is it value for money or is it all hype? Okay, have they got that money down to that £7,000 mark because they've cut corners or they've just given us the melt up in public? cracking bike at a decent price. Let's find out. Okay, so I've had a look around this bike and um, I can't find much wrong with it. So I said I wasn't going to do any riding. I'm now going to go for a ride. I'm not going to video it because this bike, I've just been doing I've had about half an hour do some country lanes and uh, this bike deserves to be ridden it's absolutely just a fun little buzz box of a bike it absolutely loves to be rugged sorry, ridden um, reasonably hard I meant to say, not rugged obviously it's not my bike, don't want to rag it best laid plans and all that right well no I've been on the main, main A roads up to now and it's just it's, it's brilliant but you've got to bear in mind there's no fairing or screen or so at high speed it's a bit blustery you'd be better off in leathers because the leather the wind will blow over and better textile jackets like tend to catch the wind but now where this bike I think excels is on A roads and B roads like this it's just a lovely little buzzy revy thing Anyway, sit back for a few minutes and I'll uh, show you what I mean. See on the brakes, it's nice and stable. You can just tip it into a corner, it holds its line nicely. Off the gas, you've got a decent bit of engine braking. Squeeze the other accelerator. Oh, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And it picks up nicely if you rev it. Um, little bike, I mean they say little bike, 660cc, 84 brake horsepower, but it's a torque. Triumph are very clever with their bikes, they make them really torquey, so at low revs you get that lovely sumptuous drive out the corners. Oh Bradley, and then we go, so we, do you know what I mean, it's got like that whoosh that you get from uh, a bigger bike, all you got, you got to keep it in the, night in the right gear. You got to keep the, the the revs sort of dancing, five six thousand RPM, and it just drives nicely out of them. So I'll just back it off a little bit as we get to this little village. Yeah. So on the main roads and the motorways, it was quite sort of uh, uh, blustery, shall we say, because there's no protection whatsoever. Um, but having said that, 70 mile an hour was fine on the motorways. 
on a bit of dual carriage where I took it on. Um, I imagine over a couple of hours it'd get a bit tiring perhaps, so you might want to fit a fly screen. Apparently they are available already. Um, and um, yeah, just do that sort of thing. Just take a little bit of blast off your chest perhaps. Um, but on the whole, yeah, nice and comfy. The legs and feet and seat and all that, everything seems to fit quite nice together. You know, it's like human size. Um, it's not dwarf sized like some of the sports bikes. But uh, yeah, so anyway, let's get back out on these country lanes, see what happens. Um, on a bumpy river at B Road like this, it actually soaks up quite nice. It's lovely to show a suspension, although it's, it perhaps lacks all the techno adjustability of some of the posher stuff. This is actually a really nice place to be. The rear suspension holds nicely. Yeah, I'll just sneak past this chap. Look at that, opening up nicely. And what you get is a nice drive. You don't get any sudden urges. You don't get any sudden whacking of the power on. It just washes along quite nicely. And we've got a lovely sort of balance to it. It's not flickable. It's not like twitchy under, under the tires. You, you don't feel like you're on marbles all the time. You don't feel like you've got a hair trigger of suspension. The whole thing is just working really well. Let's have a look at bumpier road. Now we've got the, this particular road is a bit of off camber. Awesome geezers. Woo! Nice little boys out on their bikes. What a day for it. Lovely. See on the brakes, quite stable on the brakes into a corner. This bumpy road surface would have a sports bike chucking you out of the seat but you can drag it onto a line you can hold that line nicely on the power nice very nice i've got to stop saying nice have a nice count if you want to count how many times to say nice feel free put in the comments below right look change your direction so well and, and precisely it's not like even that over those bumps under power it didn't shake its head and you get the revs going, it's a really, really rewarding thing to ride. I mean, a long time ago, people used to say things like, oh, you know, ooh, you need more power. There ain't no replacement for displacement. Well, I mean, nowadays, modern bikes are so effortlessly fast. I mean, that new Hayabusa, I guarantee, I haven't ridden it yet, I hope too soon. Um, it, it's going to be third gear, go everywhere. You'll never have to change gear. The thing I've so much oomph. Um, whereas these bikes, these mid, what they call mid-sized bikes, these sort of 60, 700cc things with um, sort of 80, 90 brake horsepower, they make you ride the bike, they make you use the gears properly. They're, a, they're riders' bikes, they're not just missiles that you hang on to for grim death, you know? They're just, they're nice little bikes. You could cut me on alongside a car, wait for the squeeze over for you, Look at that, lovely. Thanks, mate. Do you know what I mean? Just a really fun bit of kit to ride. And conversely, drop it into a town, bring the pace down, come off the gas a little bit. When you come off the gas, and you're just perhaps driving through town, you've got that lovely, silky smooth, triple, low down powerly grunty thing of an engine to just waft you along through traffic without being um throbby and awkward and you know i mean sometimes you get a v-twin for us for instance and you get these big massive power pulses and it's at low revs it's a nightmare well look here we are 25 mile an hour top gear and i can just open the throttle smooth as you like look at that you can bimble through towns through the cities in in the sort of in the higher gears keeping the revs low making the bike really comfy this is a bit like london because there's, there's not one flat bit of road surface here all these little bumps and bumps are pretty similar to uh, a, a town commuting with repair vans and potholes and stuff um so yeah on the whole as a rider's bike for a bit of fun I know I keep talking about going to the Alps or to doing the North Coast 500 up in Scotland where you've got some lovely sweeping bends. I think long, fast, three-figure bends, you're going to get tired because you're going to be hanging on for grim death and you're going to be thrashing it. But 
a road like I'm going to go first a road like uh, this this sort of size with a few twists and turns you're going to be hard, hard pushed to find a better bike I mean some bikes will be different you know and, and there's always that ultimate pace isn't there a bike can only go as fast as the conditions will allow unless you're bonkers obviously um, so how fast do you want to go do you want to have fun mixing the gearbox do you want to have fun finding that power getting the lines right squeezing out the corners coming off the power onto the brakes looking where you're going and whacking it through oh superb just bloody nice it is one more one more nice it's nice Look at check out drive website all the infos there everything you need to know and i'm i'm sure that by now all the parts and the bling bits you can buy um are already there okay so let's find somewhere to uh, stop and have a bit of a chat okay back in a minute you see the thing is about this bike is they built it to a budget seven thousand one hundred pounds on the road which in today's market is really really good value for something that I think is this is this tidy it's um I wanted to come on this test and I wanted to ride the bike and I was almost thinking let's play devil's advocate let, and let's see how it um, actually translates to the motorcycle that you buy that you actually get that when you ride out the shop and had having handed over your money or sign on the dotted line the bike that you actually take home and you ride and you ride for the next couple of years perhaps um, is it worth that money is it worth the seven thousand pounds in in terms of are you getting enough for that money in simple terms the answer is yes um, you are getting really really good value for money I've ridden the bike now for I've done 70 odd miles on it this morning um, and bear in mind it's not sold as a sports bike it's not sold as a super sport it's not it's a uh, I think they do a disservice if you use the terms like entry-level midweight bike because this is a proper little motor it goes really really well yeah it's not rip your arms out you know super elite sports bike fast but if you ride it well and you ride it properly and you actually tick up and down through that gearbox and chuck it into corners on a, on a nice steady balanced view it goes really well it's very quick are good it's got these Michelin pilot tires on um, and it comes in with top like I say top-notch kit the suspension at the front with a shower suspension in the front and although it's not adjustable in any great shape or form this the front end on this I think is absolutely way ahead of its its, its um, price tag so planted and so stable on all sorts of road surface long swooping fast bends <laughs> Tight twisties, chuck it in, drag out the corner, sort of. Of stuff. Even on acceleration of bumpy stuff, it holds its head nicely. It's none, none of that sort of flappy bar stuff. The back end's a little bit sketchy for me. I'd have to play with it, but at the moment I can see that it's actually on its softest setting and that probably tells a story I could do with adjusting it up perhaps take a little bit of the slack out of it um, but it's a bit chattery over some bumps perhaps that's one of the things they start to cut corners um, the switch gear all feels really nice and good quality um, it looks smart this paint finish is gorgeous um, one thing I'm not happy about it's not my thing not my cup of tea is this hanging over the back wheel thing I understand why they do it to then hang something like that off the back of it would spoil this nice smooth line but I don't like this I'm just not I'm not keen on it I'm not keen on it at all um, from an aesthetic point of view it works well it's very practical and it keeps the crap off your back because I'm guessing that this 
is a good decent sort of mud guard as well. Um, right, now I tried to lash my little bag, like a Krieger bag on the back. I didn't bring the proper straps with me. I'll try to, I thought I'll just use bungees and see what happens. That was a big mistake because there is no way to bungee them too. You've got these little holes here around. You could use a, a foot rest anglers and that sort of thing, but that would just drag, whatever you've lashed onto there would just drag it forward. Um, so it's not instantly practical. You, don't, you probably have to buy the genuine um, Triumph luggagey kits that I suppose they'll come tailor made to it. So you'll have all the right brackets and mounting points and so on. It's got the little um, Allen keys in the top of the tank pad here, so you could put a little click on bag would go nicely on there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's that bit, those bits and bobs done. The engine sounds typical try triple, it's lovely. Almost addictive sort of uh, uh, growl to it. I think where they've perhaps cut a few corners is this little pressed steel real brake lever. Um, you got the pressed steel sort of gear lever and that sort of thing. Um, but I can't find anywhere where they've cut, cut the finish is top notch. It's as good as anything of the more expensive. It's as good, the finish on this is just as good as the top of the range sort of speed triples and explorers, oh, Tiger 1200s they're called now. Um, so yeah, you, you can't knock the build. Try of build quality is probably, I think, one of the best on the market at the moment. Very, very few bikes could better it. Um, one thing I did notice that the one very very early on was on the motorways and A-roads at a sort of 70-ish miles an hour top gear. Slight tingle coming through the bars. Um, now that might be something to do with the weight, so it might, I don't know, but there was a slight tingly sensation coming through the bars. It might get a little annoying if you're on the motorway for a few hours, but apart from that, comfort-wise, that is probably the only thing that I would say could be an issue. Um, <clears throat> On the big main roads, the flexibility of the engine is lovely. I mean, sixth gear um, on the big main roads, 60, 70 mile an hour speed limit. You don't really have to change gear that much. It's got a nice, meaty mid range. Um, so the, the, the sort of float past overtakes you're going to perhaps do on slightly slow moving vehicles. Yeah, easy peasy. Um, not too much steering of the gearbox. Now the gearbox is was is my favourite thing of this bike. It's absolutely butter smooth clicks in nicely, it's very secure um, and you can absolutely use it it's just so well um, so I turned off onto the country roads and within within 30 seconds I felt almost at home you stick it into these corners and it holds its line well you don't get any that push and tuck and pull on the bars so you steer quickly no, no it doesn't, it's not like hair trigger think about it and you're in You've got to work at it, but you can lay the bike in and it doesn't misbehave. You lay it into the corners, left and right, and it just holds its line. There's none of that sort of, oh, oh, is it about, there's none of that, you're in the corner and it sits there. No acceleration, it drives out the corners, and there's no bar flapping, there's nothing. It's all really nice and planted. Now that could be a combination of the decent front end these shower forks and the decent tyres. Um, I don't know what it would be like on different tyres, but try to uh, specify these tyres and they seem to work really, really well. Okay, we've got, we've got two modes. We've got road and rain. Now in road, plenty quick enough. The throttle response is classic sort of fly-by-wire. It's not a one for one, so as you turn in it, you're not getting that turn corresponding to the drive you're getting. You get that classic sort of Absolutely split second of a lag, but it is silky smooth in operation. The bike's fueling is just impeccable. I mean, I'm down to 25 miles an hour top gear, roll on, full throttle, nothing funny happens. It just ticks away and just builds up ever so slowly. So you get that lovely sort of commutability through the traffic, that lazy sort of flow in the gears. Um, 
conversely, when you want to go, you knock it down a, down a few gears and you start to sing in that six, seven thousand RPM range, and the thing's flying. For a bike that, on, in theory, is a mid-weight road, naked road bike for the masses, which it is, um, it can hustle. If you want to make it go, it can go. Can't get in before the car, but I can get into contact, meet off, balance, keep that momentum going, and no, can't. Too close. I could have scared shit out of the car in front, but I can have him now on the brakes on the bend. That's it. Lovely. Never give up. That's what they say. Now I can chop the first bend, but I can't. Well, I can't really because it frightens the other cars. Okay, I can open that is. If you meet that with no traffic coming, mate, you can have all that. There you go. There you go. Oh, yes. So I can drop down to the offside, open up that bend nicely, come myself in. See, oh, that line's so smart through there. Look at that. Bloody lovely. Again, I'll caveat that. It's not, it, it's not up there with the bigger sports bikes, or the bigger naked sports bikes, because they will, on a, on a long, straight, open road, they'll just out-drag you. No problem at all. But on the twist is where the actual road itself dictates how fast you can go, you're going to hold your own with this bike. Now, I'm just going to do one of my favourite little roads. I said I wasn't going to do any riding sort of videos, I'll do a bit more talking, but I'm going to take you down this little road here. Um, it follows um, an old military uh, base, it's just not far from Camber Sands down in South East Kent. It's a very famous sort of biker's road, everyone likes it. Lots of riders come down and have a play. Uh, and sadly some riders come across as well so it is a you've got to be careful with it sand blows across the road from the from the ranges um, so obviously it makes the surface a little bit sketchy at times even though it looks bone dry but anyway let's have a bit of a play and I might even do I'll do a bit of commentary while we're at it just to keep things going so anyway here we go into a long sweeping right hand bend off the gas pick up the drive push it through off sideline just to get a look into the corner and we can back down to the near side you can follow the hedgerow pretty much all the way along and you can also see through it sometimes as well but you can't rely on it so anyway there I was a bit late coming off that run there you see where the telegraph poles are going we've got uh, cyclists be wearing all that so yeah be careful cycle lane just hold that nice wide line you can see where the fence is going so you're going to follow that really just keep it nice and steady on the power, coming out of the corners, on acceleration, roll off gently, don't need to change gear, just let it balance on the acceleration sense and squeeze on. Car park, does it on my side, no, lovely, thank you. Right, let's go again. Now, sixth gear, I mean sixth gear, and it's easy and squeezing out of these corners, so nice. People often say, oh, I don't need to change gear on my bike, it's got so much go in it. Well, you do really. So what I'll do, I'll have a bit of a fourth. <coughs> Excuse me. Have a bit of a fall, so I'll pick up out of this corner is just so much better, crisper. Drop it into the next corner, up into fifth, keep the power going, just roll off now nicely, have a gear in a fourth gear, drop off on the acceleration sense, pick up the view, just go around to the left, come over, open up that view a bit more, mind them potholes, and drive out of that corner nicely. Off the gas, got a double bend side, goes a double at three miles, and we're popping to East Sussex. Looking over the bend, I can see there's not much coming, but I just can't see because that hedgerow, so I've got to be careful. It's quite bumpy on this bit of road, but the bike's handling very reasonably well, it's coping with it quite nicely. Keep the power on coming out of this corner, drift down to the near side, I can see where the road surface is, I'm just checking there's no cars coming, no cars hidden by that hedgerow. You can't really chop the corners unless you can see all the tarmac. If you can't see the tarmac, you can't have it really, that's the best rule. Unless you absolutely know where the tarmac is. Got a roadwork sign there, so just wondering where the roadworks are. Ease off slightly, got traffic lights up ahead, so I'll just back off a little bit. Road narrows to the off side, I'm guessing they're on that side then. Oh, traffic lights aren't even working, look. But it's worth checking, because the cars could be coming through on my side of the road. As that one would have been. So there you go. Case in point. Oh, if in doubt, leave it out. Right, there you go. I can see all the way down to that next left hander, so I'm going to have this view on the offside. Car coming now, drop to my side nicely, pick up that near side view for the next left hander. Oh, look at that! Have a bit of this, son, have a bit of this. The bike's going really well, it's just lovely, just stir that gearbox. I'm guessing once it's run in, you can absolutely make it sing. But, yeah, very nice indeed.
Yeah, not bad at all. Back it off a bit, park cars, pedestrians, people with lockdown fever going for a walk. Okay, it's got me to the end of today. Um, if you've liked what you've seen or you've got any questions, put some comments down below um, as per usual, um, the old YouTube requisite. And um, yeah, there's going to be more coming up. I've already tapped them up about Hayabusa, uh, the new 1200 speed triple. Um, so in the next few weeks, certainly a few more decent, juicy tests to come along. A uh, bit more road riding. Well, there she is, the old little girl. What a hack. What an absolutely gem of a little motorbike. Um, I said earlier, I turned up thinking it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be, you know, all hairs and graces and, you know, seven and a half grand. It can't be that good for just seven grand in today's market where most of the bikes are ten plus. But I've got to say, horses, fair play to Triumph. Fair play to Triumph. They have produced a cracking bike. And at £7,100 in standard trim, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Comfy, quick. I've just um, filled up on the way back in. They gave me the bike full, I've just put the petrol back in it. I put in just over six litres, having covered 95 miles. So I'm, it's, it's over 60 miles to the gallon. And that's not bimble riding, that was like, you know, having a bit of a squeeze now and again. And it's, it's got a 16, 17 litre tank. I'll just check that, but I'll put that up over there, see what it's like. It might be a bit more. So you're looking at well over 100, 150 mile tank range, which is better than a Multistrider V4, which is meant to be an adventure bike. Um, can't go wrong with that, mate. Right, so that's it. Thank you, folks. If you like to uh, subscribe, tick the bell, all that other YouTube bollocky bollocky stuff. Oh, can I say bollocks? No. If you like to ring the bell, uh, subscribe, put a comment down below. If you want to see something, if there's something I've not talked about and you think I should talk about it, then let me know, because unless I get any feedback, I don't know whether I'm talking about the right stuff or the wrong stuff. If I'm talking about the wrong stuff, let me know. If there's things you want me to concentrate on, let me know. But that's it. I've been Reg. I'm taking a Jeep, my old uh, tank, Frank the Tank. We're going back to uh, North Kent. Got to stop off, see the daughter. She's got a fence that needs repairing. So, my name's been Reg. This is 36 Moto. Summer's out, lockdown's off. Let's go.